meaning with that notion the profound ambiguity of the world. Utopia is the profound ambiguity of the world. That's a quote, by the way. Which demands an acceptance of non-finality. The utopia, quote, the utopia of inductive thinking is thus in contrast to the utopia traditionally associated with read, uh, reaching completion, one that constitutes the world as radically indeterminate and undecidable. This doubt inhering in the world is not regarded by Musil as a lack or a fault in comparison to the utopia of completion, but is affirmed as an indeterminable place. I hyphenate here utopia, U-topia, and we'll continue doing so in writing, of course. I'm not going to do this all the time. I'm hyphenating this. <laughs> I could, but I won't. I'm hyphenating utopia to allude to Musil's view of it as a site of the heterogeneous in the sense of the chiasmic. Chiasmic meaning this overlapping of opposites, of insurpassable discontinuity within continuity. Utopia that opens itself to speak with Foucault to a yes of putting in question, end of quote, that a non-synthetic indifference demands and that is beyond the yes of the positive and the no of the negative. This doubting implies a way of, to quote Derrida, of thinking that in the sense of, quote, Nietzsche's yes saying, perceives the non-center as different from the loss of the center. And as Nietzsche himself comments on this doubt in his own philosophizing, it is an essaying, versuchen, that as an experimental philosophy countenances experimentally even the possibilities of a fundamental nihilism, without saying with that statement that it will come to rest on a no, on a negation, on the will to the no. Rather, it tends to a reversal of all the way up to a Dionysian yes saying to the world as it is. Without subtraction, exception and selection. For Musil, the inherent contingency of his notion of utopia is also associated with experiment. You, I quote, utopia means experiment. With this definition, Musil indicates that the world as utopia is an experiment free of presuppositions and that therefore the mode of cognition must be radically experimental. Without a doubt, Musil refers here to his reading of Nietzsche, who speaks of the world as a, quote, an immense laboratory for experiments, where all order and logic are missing. If by logic we mean the logic based on binary opposites. I'm adding this to the quote. The thinking based on the insight Nietzsche continues, that life could be an experiment for the knower, a doubting or a skepticism upon which I am allowed to respond, let's essay it, leads to the, quote, philosophers of the future who are experimenters, a name that itself is only an attempt, and if you will, a temptation. This idea of Nietzsche's of philosophy as attempt and temptation that Avital uh, Ronell calls the quote unquote experimental turn or the space of the test drive is the background for Musil's association of utopian doubting with the notion of experiment. As for Nietzsche, thus for Musil, the world is a quote unquote grand experimental laboratory in which the leaders quote the leaders and theoreticians of any kind of totality are missing. This, dispos this disposition towards utopian doubting, towards unending experimentation or attempting, finds its poetological sanctioning, that's a 
quote, in the genre of essayism as Musil defines it. This definition begins with a statement that what is meant with a word, attempt, or essay is something that is inherently without completion. This indeterminacy, or the indeterminacy alluded to here, which suggests scientific experimentation, becomes at the same time a poetics in that it is brought into proximity with a state of suspension, a kind of abstinence from decision or judgment of poetic language. As Musil does in review of the essay books of two contemporary writers, he writes, essayistic thinking does not demand universal generality, but it eludes us without our being able to rationally fix it. Essayistic thoughts may contain contradiction for what in the essay is the form of a judgment, if it is that, is only a momentary take, almost like a momentary photograph. Um, that which is not graspable other than in momentary takes. These thoughts are under a more flexible, but nevertheless a not lesser uh, strict logic. The idea of a more flexible logic is what Musil here associates with poetic language or uh, logic or poetic language. What Musil addresses in the notion of a more flexible logic, a logic which does not the, uh, the, the, the grasp, quote unquote, the singular and the transitory in a generality is the logic of analogy, of metaphor, of what in German would be called Gleichnis. It's close to English simile, but I prefer metaphor here. Musil calls uh, metaphor the third possibility of thinking. That is, of a thinking in the realm of both and of the excluded middle or the excluded third. And he quotes here the Latin phrase for this um, that actually amounts uh, in our tradition, Western tr tradition, to a prohibition. For Musil, it is a license within the context of the insight that he has into um, an ever-changing transitory world. The phrase is non datur tertium sive medium inter duo contradictoria. There must not be a third between two contradictory poles. Musil adopts this very thinking that is forbidden in classical logic. This thinking does not allow poetic logic, does not allow a one-sidedness or hierarchization of one position over against another, but constitutes in its indeterminacy, in its between, the utopian doubt that thinks reality as a utopian experimental structure without grasping it ever sensu stricto. 